The Leafs get back into the win column after that abysmal three-minute stretch in Calgary as they beat the Edmonton Oilers 4-1 in, in, in Edmonton and are now 16-14-4 on the year. Like I said, they get back into the win column and they end this road trip, the really tough St. Louis, Vancouver, Calgary, Edmonton road trip, 3-1, and one, a really good road trip for the Leafs, and I am extremely impressed with what I saw last night. Yeah, Frederick. Anderson was the guy yet again. One goal on 37 shots against. He was incredible. Made some huge saves. Um, but I gotta say, the Leafs allowed Connor McDavid to get, a, to get a total of that many points. A goose egg. And you see what happens when Connor McDavid has nothing and Dreisaitl only has the one lone assist and they're both minus players? Because McDavid was a minus two. Ner uh, Dreisaitl was a minus two. Those guys average almost two points a game. And they didn't get anything today, other than Dreisaitl getting the lone assist on the power play. So Frederick, other than that, other than that, really, really nice play by McDavid. You know, going around. I think it was Justin Hall, and then trying to slide a five hole on Freddie, and Freddie squeezing the legs and making a great save. Other than that, McDavid, I didn't really see a whole lot of him. I thought the Leafs did a really good job containing him. I was completely shocked that they did that. But when you hold Connor McDavid to, uh, you know, no goals, no assists, a minus two, and one shot on net, I thought they did a really, really good job. And then Leon Dreisaitl, their next big guy, only had two shots on net. So that right there is a recipe for success. You contain those two guys, you win hockey games. And that's what the Leafs did today. I did a really I thought they did a really good job. And it's and it really helps when you get on the board early in a hockey game. Yeah, excuse me, guys. Ugh. And and the Leafs did just that. You know, 438 in. Uh, Morgan Riley down low below the goal line to Pierre Engvall. And I got to say, this pass from Engvall was a really nice pass. He threads the needle through two sticks. But again, those sticks were kind of up off the ice. So he slid it right along the ice to Alex Kerfoot in front of the net. And he pots it in. And what a shot by Kerfoot up in the top corner of that. He didn't even think it was in that because he went for the rebound and put that in as well. What a goal by Kerfoot. His sixth goal of the year. Engvall and Riley grab assists. And the Leafs are in front one. One nothing, 438 into the first period. We're feeling great early. And that ends the first period. Shots and goal 13-12 in favor of the Leafs. Freddie's playing well. The Leafs get on the board first. You have a good first period. That's a recipe for great things. It didn't happen against Calgary, but the, the odd time here and there, it doesn't happen that way. But a really good first period. Go to the second period. And I wouldn't say the Leafs played a very good second period. Shots were 11-9 in favor of Edmonton. And I thought Freddie had to make a lot of big saves, scrambly saves. And made a lot of really, really nice, solid saves. Did Freddie Anderson. However... Shots on goal doesn't mean a damn thing. We've already talked about that many times before. And I gotta say, a really nice play by, by uh, Ilya Mikhaev. Coming down on the rush, everyone's crashing the net, tries a little toe drag around the defenseman, shot on goal, I think he either gets blocked or, or Koskinen makes the save. It comes loose, Pierre Engvall gets it in front, and he backhands it on, a nice kick save from Koskinen, but, and I gotta say, this is a really, really small play, but I love what Alex Kerfoot did here. He thought, hey, I can just bang away at it and, and see if it goes in, or it can just touch it, just a little push to... Ilya Mikhaev, who's a little bit farther, and it's a wide open cage for Mikhaev, and he does just that. A great play by Kerfoot. A little push past to Mikhaev, who buries it into the back of the net, and the leaves are up 2 0. That's what you like to see. Yeah, you're losing in shots. Or what was, yeah, the shots were tied at the end of two periods of play, excuse me. Or no, actually, they were down by one. Oh, well, doesn't matter if you're down by one in shots. You're up by two in the game. That is what matters. And the buds are up two after two. Now, as we have seen, we saw it against Calgary. Early parts of the third period doesn't usually go too well. Leafs take a penalty there early in the third period. And Alex Chason slides one five hole on Frederick Anderson. A tough one there. Freddie probably wants that one back. But it, the lead is cut in half now. It's 2-1. And we're all thinking as Leaf fans, oh, God, here we go. You want to put these guys away, but they're just not going away. And... With, under seven, with under seven minutes to play in the third period, Leafs on a change. Timoshov enters the zone. The fourth line enters the zone. And Timoshov stops up. 
loses Connor McDavid. McDavid's trying to be all over him. Timoshev stops on a dime. McDavid goes flying back. And what a feed to the center of the ice from, excuse me, guys. From Dimitro Timoshev to the tape of Frederick Goche and Goche roofs one on Miku Koskinen and the Leafs get their two goal lead back. It's 3-1 and that basically just takes the life right out of the Oilers and the Leafs are jacked up now with that two goal lead back. 3-1 Leafs. Goche with his third goal of the season and then with under a minute and a half to play Mitch Marner uh, they, they turn the puck over to Zach Hyman. Zach Hyman to Mitch Marner who buries into the empty net. It was a power play goal. At least, at a, at least at a power play. They decided to pull their goalie because they needed a goal. So he just had to do it. And Marner buries it into the empty netter on the power play. His sixth goal of the year. Hyman grabs the assist. And the Leafs win it. 4-1. Like I said, guys, you go into Vancouver, you go into St. Louis, you go into Calgary, you go into Edmonton, and you take three of four. Hey, you should have taken four of four. You should have won that game in Calgary. But they didn't. A 3-1 trip, you're 16-14-4 and four on the year. Yeah, it's not pretty, but you're still 6-4 and four over your last 10 games. You're feeling a little bit better. I like what we're seeing from this team. Nothing from Austin Matthews, though. That, that line was really <clears throat> quiet, and really, so was the John Tavares line. The third and fourth lines were the really good energy lines. They, they're the ones that put the puck in the net. You, know, you talk about these guys having this chance, this guy having this chance, but... The four, third and fourth lines are the ones that put the puck in the net, and that is huge. The depth of this team is really coming out. You're seeing guys like Matthews score have a two-goal game, and Tavares having a two-goal game, and we're like, wow, the top two lines are great. And tonight was one of those games where the top two lines contained the top two lines of the Oilers, and our depth beat their depth easily and come away with the victory. Great job. Kirk with two points, a goal, and an assist. That raises his points total. Oh, uh, the score is freezing on me now. Uh, Kerfoot with the goal and the assist today. Only got 11 points in 29 games for Alex Kerfoot. Obviously having a really slow start to his year, but a really good game last night for Kerfoot 14, his Instagram handle. Uh, great job by Kerfoot. Alec, uh, Ilya Mikhaev, who's put a really good year together. I've been super impressed with him. 18 points now in 34 games for Ilya Mikhaev. Uh, Goche with the goal. Marner with his uh, with his empty netter puts his points all up to 26 points, or 25 points, excuse me. It's already been updated. I'm usually doing it the night before. Engvall. And Pierre Engvall is a guy that I've been super impressed with. This guy had two assists in the hockey game. He's now has five points in 12 games. He's playing the third and fourth line. He's not playing power play time. I'm impressed with Pierre Engvall. The speed that he's got. And he seems like he has a pretty good hockey sense as well. I like what I see early on in the career of Pierre Engvall. Dmitry Timoshev. I love the kid. I don't know about you guys. But I'm a huge fan of Dmitry Timoshev. Not only is this kid quick and crafty. He can play physical, and may I add, he is only 5'10", but Dmitry Timoshev is not afraid to go flying at somebody and make a hit. I, I like that about the kid. I really, really do, and look, this, team, this Leaf team went out there tonight, and they got the job done. The Oilers have been an atrocious team, and I've said it all year long. The Oilers had a great start to the year. They're not going to be able to hold it. You know why? First off, they don't have the goaltending to do so. You're not going to be able to run it all the way with Miku Koskinen, and I think it's, uh, I think it's Mike Smith. You're not going to be able to do it. And the Oilers had that ridiculously good start, and everyone's like, oh my god, they're finally turning things around. Nope, they've won. They've lost four straight games. They're now 18-13, and 13, which they were very, very good not too long ago. And in the Western Conference now, the Edmonton Oilers, let me try and go to them here. Uh, they are still second in the division. However, they are tied with Calgary for second in the division. And I don't know if Winnipeg, is Winnipeg in that division? Let me just check to see. Um... No. So you have the Vegas Golden Knights, who are one point back. And then you have Vancouver, who's only four points back. So the Edmonton Oilers are having teams hot on their tail. And uh, the Leafs, look, that division, the Atlantic division, though, is pretty damn crowded. Good news, though, for Leaf fans. Let me go through this real quick. The Tampa Bay Lightning lost in regulation. B Buffalo lost to the Islanders. It was in overtime. But, hey, we got two points. They got one. We'll take that nonetheless. And uh, Montreal lost to Detroit. In Montreal, 2-1 in regulation, so that's nice to see. And Florida lost in regulation to the Boston Bruins. I've At this point, I've just kind of, you know, Boston's going to win the division. I've kind of just succumbed to the fact that that's just going to happen. And as long as the Leafs don't go in a wild card spot, they will face Boston in the first round. So that's, that's good news, Leaf fans. That's very, very good news. All right? And Florida, like I said, lost in regulation. So with that being said, we go to the divisional spot for the Leafs. You have Bruins at the top of the, top of the uh, Atlantic Division, as we all know and expect. You have Buffalo there at 34 games played and 39 points. Montreal at 33 games played and 36 points. 
And the Leafs, with the win, with the win last night, 34 games played and 36 points. So... Where does that put the Leafs? Three points back of Buffalo for second in the division and tied with the Montreal Canadiens for 36 points for second or third in the in the Atlantic division. However, Montreal does have a game in hand. The Tampa Bay Lightning losing. They, they still only have three games in hand. At one point, they had five games in hand. They only have three games in hand. They're, they're a point behind the Leafs. And with Florida struggling hard lately, they've lost three straight and are three and seven in their last 10. They have 35 points a point behind the Leafs with two games in hand. So the Leafs, hey, with everything kind of going right yesterday, we win. The other divisional guys, for the most part, lose in regulation. That's great to see. But we got to take this thing day by day, game by game. We can't control what other teams do. We, all we can do is our own destiny. And our next game, the Leafs' next game, is not until Tuesday as they're in Toronto taking on the Buffalo Sabres. Guys, they are three points ahead of us in the East, in the Atlantic Division. If this team wants to be one of the one of the better teams, in, if we want home ice in the first round, bottom line, they're second right now. They're in home ice. And it's so early, I know it's not even halfway through the year. I get it. But if we're talking that kind of thing, second place in the Atlantic Division is home ice. So that's a team that's three points ahead of you in that spot right now. The Leafs are trying to catch the Buffalo Sabres. They got to find a way to do so at home against Buffalo. And I'd love to see it in regulation. That'd be perfect to watch. All right. Seven o'clock puck drop there on Tuesday night. Linus Allmark and Frederick Anderson are the expected goaltenders in that game on Tuesday night. All right. You know what, guys? That is going to do it for this one. If you guys enjoyed this video and you guys enjoyed that game last night, smack the like button. Do appreciate that. And the subscribe button if you guys have not already. Comment down below your thoughts on the game, your thoughts on the video. Who is your MVP in this one? Uh, I don't, I mean, I'm going to give it to Frederick Anderson. The guy was a beauty all the way. F you know, for the first two periods, it was kind of a tight game, but he was electric with Frederick Anderson. He's my MVP in that game last night against the Oilers. I want to hear your guys' thoughts on that, your, your guys' thoughts on this team. Everything you want to talk about when it comes to the Toronto Maple Beliefs. And um, Twitter is down below for myself. Follow up, send me DM, do all that great stuff. Also, the Patreon account is down below. So if you guys have not signed up for that, go do so. If you are interested, the link is down in the description for that. All right. And I will talk to you guys Raptors edition on Monday as they welcome in the Cleveland Cavaliers to Scotiabank Arena. All right. 7.30 tip off there on Monday night. Raptors looking for their second straight victory. And even though it's a garbage team, you got to take care of business on home court. Six and 20 are the Cleveland Cavaliers. You got to do a job. And as for our Leafs, as we've talked about, their next contest is on Tuesday as they welcome in the Buffalo Sabres to Scotiabank Arena. 7 o'clock puck drop there. Linus Olmark, Frederick Anderson are the expected goaltenders there on Tuesday night at Scotiabank Arena. Thank you so much for listening and watching. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Talk to you guys then.